so low leveling episode one was almost perfect i already got a bunch of people coming into my comment section we're one episode in by the way saying huh manhua better it's so bad it's like it's motherfucker it's one episode that you're comparing the entire published work to it's fucking crazy how people are so they just want fucking negative engagement anyways ace brandon's video let's see what he has to say so the solo leveling anime is officially here, and I think you could argue this is one of the more anticipated watches yes. of at least the past year, maybe. Yes, you know why? Because this fucking has been hyped to the max. There has been like at least like seven different trailers leading up to this in terms of promotion and advertisement. They've been going all out for this. Longer because when this originally got announced, I mean, a poster image alone was setting the community up. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, you see a single pic. No one knows what it is, but it just gets so hyped. There's a big fandom. There's a lot of expectations for the series. Fire. Videos yeah. being made post upon post. Mm -hmm. And while there was definitely some worry that A1 Pictures was going to rush it out too soon, I mean, people are like, oh, are we going to get an 86 situation? We're going to get... What happened to 86? I, I watched that. And fun fact, yes, I did watch it. Stop fucking telling me to react to it, but... What happened with 86? Did they fuck up the production value at some point? I can't really remember. Yeah, part of it, and that's going to get delayed. And then there was some delays. I think originally the rumblings was that it was going to be a back-to-back -back two core, and right now it's listed as 12 episodes, so I have to imagine. Mm, that's right. I did hear that solo leveling was going to get more, right? But right now it's listed for 12, and then we're going to get like a split core, right? We're getting two different batches of episodes. And I'm fine with I'm fine with that. Like, at, like, at least it's not just getting 12 episodes and done, right? I, I just... I'll wait a season. I don't care. Walking in and out of this first episode, the only thing I really knew about it was it was hype, that it was one of the more popular series, and yeah. in terms of, like, mechanics, world building, character progression... They went in depth, dude. The, the, the fucking guild leader, you know, the guild exec, right? The old man was straight up going into the mechanics of, like, how we need, like, these monster stones and, like, different type of stones and how it's, like, sustainable energy, and, like, they're going really deep into just, like, a little bit, not boring details, but, like, the world building in deaths or anything really about it i knew yeah. literally nothing this was all just word of mouth going in blind and i think we definitely need to talk about this first episode not only because it was a very good first episode but it definitely gave me a vibe and a kind of taste that i haven't really experienced quite like this which probably mm -hmm. helps because you know the whole webtoon manhwa kind of situation being adapted this is gonna be the one of the most annoying things but every fucking week I'm gonna have little babies coming into my fucking videos typing Webtoon was better! Manga was better! Shut the fuck up and just enjoy the anime! That can go pretty average or pretty extraordinary because I know there's a lot of great stuff that has yet to be adapted kind of the Webtoon medium. So yeah. walking in, seeing so much hype and excitement, I mean, I remember seeing a lot of creators talk about this one for a long time. Straight up, for like the past year, people have been making content on solo leveling, even though there was no content, excluding the actual, like, the manga and the light novel or the webtoon or those, that's that kind of stuff. Like, I'm talking about anime stuff. People have been just hyping this shit up. And walking out of this, I only have really, I think, one major criticism about it, and that is, I think they met The ending? Because I, 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 you know what would have been amazing? This first episode should have been, it felt like the half of like a, an hour long premiere, right? I would have liked to enjoy, because like some, some, one valid criticism that I did hear in the chat was, it felt a little lackluster because it was building up towards something that was getting really good. Then they just kind of like abruptly ended it 30 minutes in. And the next half of this one hour premiere, right? And it should have been, is that the real meat that hooks people in? So some people will literally just like take this one episode and think, eh, nothing really happened, which is kind of true. Nothing really did happen. We get introduced like answer fighting. It's like, what, what the fuck? And you got the main character and you get, you know, Sung Jin Mu was like this lowest, weakest class hunter ever. You get to understand like why people love going to the dungeon with them. We get the explanation about the magic, you know, uh, the, like, the mechanics of the world building here. We go into the double dungeon. Everything was set up. Everything was just set up and it was getting really exciting at the end and then it just kind of cut off. Which is not the best look if you're trying to captivate a new audience with the first episode. It'll still do well because of the name, right? It's not like solo leveling is ruined or botched because it did that. But it definitely would have been helpful if there was like an hour-long premiere first episode and you get the whole thing right off the bat, in my opinion. Messed up by not having this be a double-length episode. Yeah! <laughs> I think everybody's talking about that, right? 
Everybody's talking about that. Me personally, I fucking hate double length premiere episodes. Fucking one hour episodes. It's so fucking annoying to edit. But then again, I have Sir Gregor now as my editor. So that's his problem. Like maybe having like a 13 episode season. Having yeah. that quote unquote one hour premiere. Just because like there's sometimes those shows that feel like, okay, I appreciate the slow buildup. Like not really jumping into saying, hey, insert character death here. And the first 10 <laughs> minutes of this flew by in a blink of an eye. The That's world fun. building, the idea of the portals opening it up. Here's these hunters. Mm -hmm. The aptitude with their magic abilities gives them their rank. Right. Bullets and stuff. And the most interesting thing is nobody can change their rank, right? Except the main character. Oh, I'm going to kill these creatures. I love all that. I don't want that changed at all. But like by the time the episode ends and you just are like, everyone's fucked and yeah. the credits play. Yeah. I mean, I really feel like a double length would have done this justice. They blue balled us. change the fact that I'm absolutely excited to jump into episode two next week. And we got a shit ton to talk about because I personally love this first episode. One of my personal favorite first episodes of the season for sure. And as someone who knows literally nothing about where this goes, I look at this situation as everyone is completely screwed, mm. yet we know our MC has to make it out of this because... Okay, who's gonna live out of this? Do you think Family Man, the green puffy jacket, is gonna make it out alive? I feel like because he's been mentioning his family over and over, I got a second child coming on its way. In these scenes, it's like the the, the most common uh, stereotype of this is like in a movie where a fucking cop is one day out from retirement and he says it out loud. Then the fucking monsters attack. It's like, you fucking dumbass. You did it on yourself. The main character, Sun Jing, was going to survive, right? But the, the if the green puffy jacket dude survives, that means that the author is kind of just like baited us saying, yeah, I'm going to do dead flags, but it's like... A play on it making guys think that it's so intentional like of course he's gonna die but it's like psych he's actually gonna live otherwise there wouldn't be a damn show unless they wanted to shift characters and he's on the goddamn poster so he ain't going mm -hmm. anywhere so we'll find out where it goes i do have a full live reaction to this wonderful first episode over hit on up his patreon, patreon guys like to see my full uncut thoughts there over there if you're interested like i said i know literally nothing about this this is completely fresh and blind and i think the thing that immediately caught my eye with this was how real it felt, which is, you know, people like real. To say, real. There's a goblin. There is this mythical creature, and you're saying it's You know what made this real to me? Is outside the gate, when they were about to go in, and people were just, like, huddling up, these are, like, adventurers, but they're wearing, like, casual modern-day clothing. You know, it's, like, tanks, magicians, rogues, blah, blah, blah. But they have, like, modern-day, like, you know, clothing. Which is which makes sense, because the gate just opened out of fucking nowhere in Korea, right? So, like, stuff like that is, like, whoa, I feel like I could be one of them. I don't know. It feels real. I hate it when people do this, but I always have to explain it. The banes of my existence of being a YouTuber is I have to baby sometimes people. What I mean when I say things feel real is that, yes, there's mythical elements to this show, mm. but the way the characters are interacting with said mechanics or creatures, if we were put into a world like theirs, this is how I would expect people to actually act. And immediately, this doesn't feel like your traditional high school anime. How they would act, maybe just like how the old people were like, thank God, Sun Jing Wu is in our party, we're gonna actually survive to eat another day kind of deal. What I mean is like those, okay, here's the MC, super socially awkward, obviously he's gonna probably build a harem, or he just... Yeah, and then the girls just fucking fawn over the socially super awkward guy, why? Because he's a fucking main character of the anime, and they are trying to appeal to the main demographic. Not you guys, you guys are a bunch of kings. He doesn't have confidence and he's just a bore to watch. It's like, why is this guy gonna be the OP guy of the show, right? Cause it's a power fantasy, right? Cause you show fucking weak level one fucking gang mob member doing nothing. Cause it's so relatable for a weak person to suddenly fucking grow another foot. He becomes this fucking six foot three K-pop model out of nowhere. It's like, people love that fantasy. They, they love to see this crazy shift, you know, from nothing to like zero to hero kind of deal. I, I'm just as guilty. I love that shit. If the show is called solo leveling, I mean, I'm going to have to assume our MC is going to become an absolute badass and become mm -hmm. really ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty much in the name. And almost immediately, like, just him walking through that little, like, construction area, right? We get, like, this big exposition dump, which didn't really feel like exposition, but, like, really was at the end of the day. We're walking through, and everyone's kind of like, you think, like, he's the hot shot already. I'm like, okay, like, are we just jumping in and basically, like, he's already, like, number nah, one dog? he's the and weakest. No, he's the weakest. Like, people, like, think he's pretty much pathetic at the end of the day but yep. there is some uh, general friendliness like you know we don't want to say it to his face we don't want yeah they don't want to say it because they like you when he's in the party 
Because if he's there, that means that the dungeon we're going into must be weak as fuck. And everybody's just trying to survive another day, get some food, right? I the guy's feeling, but I mean, he goes on the weakest missions and yeah. barely comes back alive. Like, you don't want him on your team. And he's the only, like, the healer only exists in this party just to heal Sun Jing Mu. Not the rest of the party, they're chilling. Team, basically. And there's a little bit of mystery, there's a little bit of like, hey, listen, we're pretty much going about, like, there's something with his father, there's a mystery there. But I like the idea. The dad bailed, like Toji, no fucking child support, mom's in a hospital, sister's gonna go to college now. In a show like these, now, it's not a shonen anime, but it doesn't have, it definitely has like shonen elements. Usually the dads, the moms, the mom is usually dead, but the dad is like super important, right? The dad's usually like missing and he comes back and he's actually a super important, powerful character, that kind of bullshit, right? It, it's a trope that happens over and over again, so the dad, Wait, wait for that to cook. Idea that pretty much we go into what is should be a pretty easy mission for a lot of people, and we see him almost die like that. Like yeah. he gets stabbed right in by the goblin chest or like in the stomach area. Bro was dueling a fucking tiny ass goblin and lost. Yeah, and if it wasn't for his healer girlfriend over here, or at least she wants to be his girlfriend. I mean, she was she's hustling for that date. I, I... Juhi. I'm sorry. You've seen Cha Heian, right? You've seen who the main girl of this show is. This girl. Childhood friend type, that's gonna lose. Respect it. The fact that when you see the healing, it's even different there. Like, the characters act their age, or at least act like they're not just an anime trope to be like, oh, here's the tsundere, here's the wimpy MC who will become an overpowered badass and has no social skills. Well, so because she's so worried for Sun Jing Wu, this is a lot more like her acting like her character. Will just seem like a douchebag. Like I generally like looked at characters talking. I'm like, oh, they feel like people. Like they actually feel real. Like the way they're being written. We hardly had any interaction. The way that they're being written. I think it, like there's some scenes of like the older people talking, but I think that uh, yeah, I agree. One of the older people are talking. They're just kind of like looking out for themselves, and they're just like, Shh, don't don't tell that boy, you know, that we're happy about it. Yeah, for sure, I, I agree. With our main character. And I was already like, you know what? He already outclasses half the characters I see in any given anime season just because he feels normal and not pathetic. And I really appreciate it. They didn't go the whole alpha energy like he's the big dog. No, he just felt pretty normal. Like, yeah, I yeah. think anyone would be a little uncomfortable because of how everyone views him. But most importantly, he ain't given up. And I can kind of respect the hustle. At a certain point, I would probably turn around, especially when, when you see a gate like this. Like a double dungeon's already sus enough, right? We should have already gotten out. But when you approach a gate like this, like, what are you thinking? It's a fucking 50 foot, like, wide, like, tall gate. And the craziest thing is if you open the gate, suddenly it's a fucking boss chamber and the torches start lighting up with blue flames. Like, what goes on in your mind right there? Shouldn't you get the fuck out? I'd be running. When I see a giant fucking gate, I, I just can't do that. Like... Get the, the fuck whole out! Idea of like, what needs a door that big? Yeah, I'm this tall in comparison. Get the fuck out! I'm getting McDonald's, bro. I'm out. <laughs> like that's that's just me anyway. Agreed. But I appreciate the fact that when it comes to like the brutality, and there is some brutality. There's oh, one of the guys. He got with the guy that got incinerated. <laughs> you can see his bones, fucking the skeletons, dude. And the other guy that tried to run for the door and try to open it. This one of the fucking guards just cleanly slices his head off, and he just like hunched over on his knees. So good. Head severed, people being stabbed in the stomach, and even the healing magic is grotesque. It doesn't feel gory. It doesn't feel like edgy, I guess I should say. Because it does feel gory, but not in the way that... I guess healing magic, as in like when she was like healing, you could see like the open wound kind of like close up. That That is a little grotesque, right? It's a shock factor. I never feel like they're trying to splatter the screen to be like, ooh, do you see how grotesque? No, it's like, this is the brutality of the world. And some of my favorite anime that have used like very brutal monsters in terms of attacking is stuff like a Grimgar fantasy in Ash. Something where like, Grimgar fantasy and is that an anime we should check out? Goblins can be some of the most dangerous things for low level people because Goblin Slayer. Maybe clapping cheeks. I mean, you're not indestructible. You're not Hercules, right? And the fact that anything can stab you and kill you at a moment's notice, and these holes that are in their body and the way they fill back up almost like this mm. reverse kind of Right, thing. right, it's right, gross. right. It is, but it never feels like, oh, we're just doing this for the shock and gore. It's like, no. If you're gonna tell the anime watcher that you're watching something where you can physically die at a moment's notice and you're seeing these very brutal attacks but it's not like they're shoving the camera up like a gopro being like you see all their organs you see how gross this is it's more like holy shit they are screwed and i really yep. enjoyed the vibe i wasn't expecting it to be this intense whatsoever i
next episode's gonna get even more intense, right? Because this is just a build up to it. What the fuck is gonna happen next episode, right? Like, we have like the. What is it? The three commandments of like some kind of text, right? It's like revere gods, put your faith in God. I forget, but clearly these are like the clues on how to survive here. Because if you try to walk out the fucking door, you dead. I didn't know it had this level of brutality. Nor did I know it had this level of brutality, but felt so realistic without being an edgy mess all at the same time. One of the biggest surprises for me of this show next to the general characters feeling normal. Like, even the girl who, like, just wanted to turn around because clearly she doesn't want to see the guy that she's friends with and potentially even has a crush on get mm. killed when he's not fit for this job. But you also understand why this man needs his money and needs to progress the way. Yeah, because the dad fucking left and the mom's got hospital bills and the sister's got college bills. He is, even if he's not a fit for the job and his Bro doesn't even have fucking shoes, dude. His toes are slipping out. He's got fucking slides, but he needs these crystals. Poor guy. Kind of stupid at the end of the day. And when it came to that big fight, I mean, I knew a boss fight when I saw one, but mm. I mean, that was... Like, if you see a gate that big, it's a boss. And I'm like, like, as soon as you walk in, you know... You guys ever like look at something in a game like even in like Elden Ring or like the Souls game you ever see you ever, you ever see like obviously those games you there is like a fucking yellowish brownish portal that you walk in and a boss scene starts playing but imagine you open these gates thinking it's just chill and a fucking boss scene cut scenario starts playing that you can't exit out of and you're like what have I fucking done? What have I fucking done? It's creepy. I was like, okay, are we getting some weeping angel shit from Doctor Who? Like, if we stop looking at them, are they going to move? And that kind of seems like mm. what happened, because those two guards, the one was... They moved. Like the eyes were moving. Point, but he gets splattered, big laser blast. And the only really thing we get to see from our MC that seems like he's very talented at is observation. Right, because there was a flashback that was pretty much only there to let us know that his instinct on survival... Is high. That's why he said, get the fuck down as soon as the, the laser beam happened, right? He knew about that attack before yeah. it happened because he's very good at carefully observing things. Does that imply he has future sight? Things. So it'll be interesting because I don't know how he gets out of this because unless he gets some magical power up or he unlocks his true hidden talent. Yeah, that's clearly what's going to happen, right? Like This challenge is clearly the starting moment for him to turn into a fucking K-pop model. I just don't know, like, how do we beat the boss then we get rewards is this like a, a, a scene where it's like you you know in video games where you fight a boss and it's like already unfair and the fact that like you try to fight it but you lose regardless and then like a different cutscene place is it that kind of scenario i don't know i don't know what he's gonna do but i'm definitely excited for more voice actors were great the characters intrigue me the world building is fascinating but i think most importantly it just feels like it's realistic for their setting if portals did open up and had all these kind of monsters come in in terms of okay we need the hunters in terms of how they're going to deal with it but most importantly like the way characters interact with each other and the blend mm. of what is a normal looking environment with this more magical kind of like i think the normal looking environment of the magical kind again just as something as simple as the lobby before going to the gate Bunch of dudes just wearing modern clothing like the green puffy jacket guy. Just a family man. But he also happens to be some kind of like warrior tank, right? I, I don't know. The hybrid of that kind of thing makes it feel more realistic. It feels like I can kind of envision it happening in my own world. So it's like more immersive rather than a completely fantasy land that I can't really relate to. Like aesthetic to it. It just feels different. It does. I didn't know what to expect of this one. I thought it was just kind of be like an action anime because like the webtoon stuff that I've seen up to this point... Well, I've enjoyed hasn't been anything that I would be like, oh, I can see why people are calling this an amazing adaptation or like an amazing source that maybe didn't get the greatest adaptation. But this one, I'm like, no, this is like this it's has great. potential to be one of A1 Pitcher's best projects to date. And this has me incredibly excited for more. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the drill, those are my feelings. Let me know what you thought of the first episode of Solo. You guys know what to do. Please go sub to Brandon's channel. He's a very well-spoken person that breaks down these episode reviews really well. I really enjoy watching his reactions. But again, I feel like people are casting a judgment on this show too quick for both sides, whether or not you're saying it's peak or whether or not you're saying that it's bad. Give it one more episode. I feel like when we get the actual episode one, the one hour premiere that was supposed to be, I think next episode's going to hook everybody. But inevitably, you know, you're going to have some fucking babies saying, it should have been this way, way, way. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Just enjoy the fucking reaction and get the fuck out.